Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials with vlog post number 23-18 and in this vlog post I'd like to tell you about four driving tips you may not know. Now driving is one of those things that's kind of like parenting or teaching in that everybody who does it thinks they can do it really well and thinks they're good at it and I'm here to tell you most of you are wrong. You're not as good as you think you are. Now, who am I to tell you about driving? Well, let me just share a couple of things with you. Number one, I was an Air Force jet pilot. Now, when you're a jet pilot and you're going faster than the speed of sound, or you're even doing only 700 miles per hour ground speed, a very small mistake can have serious consequences. So you learn very quickly that you want to pay attention to what's going on all the time. And you have a very acute focus on safety and procedure. Now, the second reason I can tell you about driving is that I was the safety officer for the Air Force's academic instructor school, and in that position, I won safety officer of the year for Air University. And because of this, I became focused on safety issues in all aspects of life. And my kids can tell you that, that many times I've told them for safety, we need to, and then I would tell them what it was we needed to do to be safer. And the other reason I can tell you about driving is that unlike most of you watching this video, I've had more than 60 years of driving experience. Now, yes, I have had a couple of fender benders, and most of these little incidents that I have had have been because I ignored the tips that I'm about to share with you. Let's get started. Tip number one is always maintain control of the vehicle you're driving. This means you don't let things get out of control. And if you pay attention to the rest of the tips, I'm going to tell you a few reasons that you need to pay attention to that will help you keep control of your vehicle. But for example, one time my son, when he was a very young driver, I was thinking probably 17 or 18, he was on an off ramp of an interstate that was a downhill and it was a decreasing radius turn. Now, when you're going downhill, it's harder to slow down and stop than when you're just cruising. And if there's a turn and you slow down for the beginning of that turn, but then the turn decreases in radius, you're gonna be needing to go slower. Well, he didn't have the experience to handle this and he was turning the vehicle and turning it and turning it but he didn't turn it enough and the left front fender as he was going through this turn scraped the outside concrete barrier and he wound up having to do some work to pay for the repair to that but he essentially lost total control of the vehicle and he got the experience from that and I don't think he's had any accident since then and I'm very happy with that and I know he is as well. So the number one rule is always keep control of your vehicle. This is number one. My granddaughter is 14 years old and she's just now starting to think about driving. She will be able to get her learner's permit within a year. So I have already shared with her rule number one, always maintain control of your vehicle. Now, rule number two is never let yourself get distracted. Never let yourself get distracted from controlling the vehicle. Distraction is the number one cause of accidents in the United States today. I heard this on the internet, so it must be true, right? But distracted driving causes more accidents than pretty much anything else today. I'll give you a couple of examples. I was teaching a class of 13 year olds and 13 year olds, they're getting ready to start thinking about driving. And so they were interested in when I used a driving example. Let me put you in this situation. I'll tell you the story. You're driving along, you're in the car by yourself, and all of a sudden you become aware that in the car with you is this really angry wasp. And this wasp is buzzing around, it's hitting the windows. And I said to the kids in class, I said, what are you gonna do? Let me ask you that question. What are you gonna do if there's this angry wasp in the car with you and it's buzzing around? Well, of course, the first thing a lot of people will do without thinking about it is they'll start swatting at this wasp and get out of here, get away from me. So I said to the kids, and I'll say to you, if you do this, what's the worst thing that can happen? And just like you, they said, well, you could have an accident. I said, 
absolutely right. And if you have an accident, what's the worst thing that can happen? And they kind of sat back in their chairs and they said, you could kill somebody or you could get killed. I said, you're absolutely right. And if it's not that, then another bad thing that could happen is you could bend up the car and it would be very expensive and run your insurance rates way through the sky. And they were nodding, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know you agree with that. And I'll say to them next, if you just ignore the wasp and decide to pull off to the side of the road when it's safe and open the doors and roll down the windows and let the wasp go out, what's the worst thing that can happen? They said, well, you could get stung. I said, yeah, that's the worst thing that could happen. You could get stung. So which is worse, getting stung or having an accident? And they kind of, oh, I see what you're saying here. So don't let yourself get distracted while driving. Let me share with you one more example. This was when my daughter was learning to drive. She was probably 16 years old, maybe 17, and she was in our suburban with a bunch of girls, and they were driving through a residential neighborhood. And all of a sudden, one of the girls in the back seat of the car screams, oh, look at that dog! And my daughter turns around and she says, where? And of course, when she did that, she had her hands on the wheel and she did she did the deal where she pulls the wheel when she went to look, and she went up over the curb and she hit a street sign. And it destroyed the street sign and put a couple of scrapes on the vehicle. I think she had to buy an outside rear view mirror to replace it. But it was a very good lesson to learn about distracted driving because nobody got hurt. There was minimal damage to the vehicle and the city took care of the destroyed street sign. But she has not had an accident since then that I know of. And it made me really glad for both of my kids that they had these really minor accidents and they learned to pay a lot more attention to their driving and did not have to learn these lessons with dire consequences as so many people do. So rule number two, do not let yourself get distracted while driving because if you do, you're gonna violate also rule number one and possibly lose control of your vehicle. Now, all of you out there know there are tons of reasons why people can get distracted while driving, tons of methods they do. For example, they'll be fooling with the radio or they'll be fooling with their CD player. Yeah, what's a CD player? Yeah, <laughs> technology marches on. They'll be fooling with their phone. They'll be text messaging. Distracted driving, the number one cause of accidents today. Don't let it happen. Now, those are the two rules you need to keep in mind while you're driving at all times. I also have two guidelines that you also need to keep uppermost in your mind while you're driving. The first of these items of guidance, this is tip number three, is situational awareness. You need to always be aware of what's going on inside your car and what's going on outside your car. Inside your car, for example, if somebody were to put a piece of cardboard between your eyeballs and the dashboard and say, how much fuel have you got? You ought to be able to tell them. If they say, how fast are you going? You should be able to tell them. As a pilot, I learned always keep your cross scan going. In other words, you're looking outside, then you're looking inside, and when you look at inside, you look at all your gauges, and you register what they say, whether they're in the normal range, whether there's something that needs to be concerned about. And if you learn to develop a really good cross-check of your gauges, it'll only take a half a second to glance at your gauges. And then as you're looking outside, you register what it is you saw and think about, do I need to worry about this? For example, if there's a temperature gauge and in your cross-check you notice that it's in the red, you're starting to think, ooh, this is something I need to pay attention to. And then you start looking for a place to pull over and see if there's something wrong with the car. So. Tip number three is situational awareness inside and outside the car. Now, situational awareness outside the car has to do with tip number four, which is always think and look ahead, far ahead. Now, when you're doing your situational awareness scan and you're looking outside the car, you don't want to look just at the car in front of you. You don't want to look just at the road in front of you. You don't want to look at two cars or even three cars in front of you if there's traffic. Look four or five cars in front of you because what happens if you're in pretty heavy traffic and you're doing a good speed, 45, 55 miles an hour, and five cars in front of you, all of a sudden 
a dog runs out in front of that car and that car slams on its brakes and the car behind that one slams on its brakes and the car behind that one slams on its brakes and if you're not paying attention far ahead of you then before you know it you're going to be right on top of the car in front of you and that car will be stopped and you won't be able to stop so be aware very far ahead of you now another thing i want to bring out for you in situational awareness and looking ahead is other drivers drivers just like any other group of people on this planet whether you group people by religion or nationality or race or eye color or anything what school they went to any group of people is divided into three main categories and the biggest category right in the middle is normal people these are people who are just nice people they are the salt of the earth people they they do what you you expect them to do as normal citizens and these are just part of all of society and there's a segment of people of any population that is just wonderful wonderful people they are salt of the earth they go out of their way to care for and be considerate of other people and at the other end of the spectrum you're going to have the jerks the idiots the people who are oblivious, they focus only on themselves and their own concerns, and the world around them just goes away. As Randy Cassingham would say, these are the oblivious. They're oblivious idiots. Now, by looking at any population, and this includes the drivers that you're in among every time you go driving, in any population, you cannot tell which segment of the people are jerks, idiots, oblivious. The legendary Sun Tzu wrote the book, The Art of War, and in that book he said, do not prepare for what it is likely that the enemy will do, prepare for what it is possible for the enemy to do. Now, when you're driving, other drivers are not exactly the enemy, but you have to treat them as if they were because you need to prepare not for what it is likely for jerks to do, but for what it is possible for them to do. One quick example of this, you're driving down a long country road, you're doing about 55 miles an hour, here's a crossroad, and you see waiting at the stop sign on this crossroad, there's another car. Are you going to just say, oh, he stopped, I'm going to keep on going? And you may do that, but there's a chance that this other driver is a jerk or an oblivious and maybe they're busy texting on their phone and they finish and just as you get up to that car they finish and they put their phone down and they decide it's time to pull out and you're right there and you can't stop what i'm saying is always be aware for what it is possible for others to do if you're on a highway and there's a left lane and a right lane and you're doing the speed limit maybe plus a couple and somebody else is in the other lane and they're doing 15 or 20 miles below the speed limit and you're catching up with them pretty fast is it likely they're going to pull over in front of you all of a sudden no it's not likely is it possible yes it's definitely possible and if it hasn't happened to you yet then if you do any interstate driving it's likely it will happen to you at some time that somebody is going to pull right in front of you doing a lot slower than you're doing so always watch out for the other drivers be aware for of what it is possible for them to do and that way you're going to stay out of trouble those are the only tips that i've got for you today number one always stay in control of your vehicle number two don't let yourself get distracted number three situational awareness be aware of what's going on inside your car be aware of what's going on outside your car and number four look and think ahead now one final item in the think ahead category is while you're not driving you need to decide right now how you're going to handle drivers that just aggravate the stew out of you what happens if somebody goes zooming past you and they pull in front of you and all of a sudden they slow down ah i hate that you want to yell at them you want to call them all sorts of colorful names you bookshelf you plant whatever you can think of many names you want to call them but is that what you want to do you don't want to let yourself get upset while you're driving what happens if somebody just sitting in a traffic light and it's red and it turns green and they just sit there you want to yell at them you want to scream at them how do you handle that think in advance how you want to handle that and one of the best solutions i ever heard was somebody said if i get so aggravated i just say bless you and move on or you can 
think in your mind what's going on in that person's life that's causing them to act this way and just empathize with them. Decide now how you want to handle traffic aggravations and that will keep you from getting distracted and losing control of your vehicle or worse yet intentionally causing an accident. You don't want to do that. I don't want you to do that. And that's all I've got for you in this vlog posting. If you thought this was a good one and it needs to be shared with a whole bunch of other people, give me that thumbs up so that YouTube robots will know to recommend it to other people. Leave me a comment down in the comment section about how you thought this video affects you and people in your life and the people that you think need to see it. If you know of other reasons that people get distracted, you can leave those in the comments as well. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're not a subscriber, why not go ahead right now and click that subscribe button and then the bell icon and YouTube will let you know by email whenever I post another great video right here on David's Tutorials and Vlog. In the meantime, have yourself an absolutely wonderful day, week, year, month, whatever, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.